Hello you guys, welcome back to Beamer Light. I am back, I'm back with my beamy hat on because you guys, it is cold here in Washington. Um, we love the fall weather, if you guys are like me, my favorite, favorite, favorite season of all time is fall, then spring. Um, but yeah, I wanted to come on here and just share with you guys a word, a message that was just in my spirit as I was worshiping today. And if you're like me, I love to worship in the car, you guys. It is like, I love worship, but there's just something about blasting it in the car. And if you're like me, then you understand. So for those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Jeanette and we are a faith-based channel. We are a ministry. We have community groups that are faith-filled, Holy Spirit-filled. If you guys are wanting to join those, all of that information is in the description box. So for those of you guys returning, welcome back. So I wanted to share this message, this word with you guys today about um, sharing the gospel is not trendy. All right. We're just going to throw that out there first and foremost. And I did pray beforehand as I always do before coming on here. So, um, sharing in the good news is amazing. It's wonderful. It's joyful, right? It's, it's a time where we can, you know, represent Jesus and be his reflection to those that are lost, those that are, you know, unsaved, those that are not saved, should I say, those that don't believe, maybe atheists. And, you know, we have all types of religions out there. And so I want to just speak on that a little bit because maybe you're in school, maybe you're in high school, middle school, maybe you're in college, maybe you're in the workplace and you're amongst people that are unbelievers, people that don't serve Christ and people that don't understand your faith. Maybe they look at you like you're crazy, like, who is this girl? Who, who is this guy? Like, why are they so obsessed with Jesus? You know, I do want to talk about the Jesus culture because that is a lifestyle that we can partake in as we should be. But one thing I will share, even through my own experiences, when I moved to California back in 2021, I lived there for a year and a half. By the grace of God, y'all, I moved right through that pandemic and God kept me and he always had his hand on my life while living there as well. So, um, when I was living there, I had two separate roommates on different occasions at separate times, and they were unbelievers. And I was very guarded in the truth of God in my life and in my walk. And I said, okay, God, like if I'm going to do this, you know, you got to strengthen me because I know how it is, <clears throat> excuse me, I know how it is for those that, you know, people, they don't understand the word of God. They don't understand faith in God, and they don't understand this walk and lifestyle and it took a lot of growing for me to do as I was roommating with these two separate women who were great girls. They, um, you know, I learned a lot, <laughs> but I kept my, my, my firmness in my faith. And, um, there, that's a whole long story. But when I moved to California, I was amongst, you know, a lot of Christians, a lot of believers. I did the LA beach Bible study that we loved. And that was just so edifying, so beautiful to see women coming together on the beach, which is one of my favorite places, things in the world is being in the ocean and at the ocean at the beach is just something that I can relate to so much, you know, with the Lord, I can connect with him even deeper. But, um, besides that, I was also seeing, you know, uh, people who were not in the faith. I was sometimes around them and, and I had no choice. And, um, you, you will be mocked. Like if I had to put it that way in this world, following Jesus is not cool, but it's because people don't understand the amount of freedom that they can have in Jesus. So sometimes, you know, the enemy lies to us and he lies to people. He keeps them in deception. He keeps them in confusion. And, I, and I, I've been to public school my whole life. Um, I went to college for the two years that I went to. I was a model in the modeling industry amongst, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily in the faith like I am today, but I knew about God. I had a relationship with God. And a lot of times my morals was tested. My mindset was tested, and if I gave in to those things, then I slowly started to be led astray. I was I was being led astray. And so I always say, and I always tell my group says, I always tell my family, I always tell people around me, like, who you partner with is very important. Who you surround yourself is very important. Because if we're constantly feeding our spirits the things of God, if we're constantly feeding ourselves things that are holy and pure and righteous, then what are we going to get out of that? 
we're going to continue to gain more of God because we're surrounding ourselves and being planted in the truth of God. Now, we live in a world that is broken and, and it's deceptive and the enemy is prowling around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. And people are being led astray in their own desires and their flesh and their weakness. We know that because we came from that. But if you just stood firm in your faith in Jesus and you didn't waver and you didn't wither because of something someone said about you, you have to be so guarded in God's truth in your life, right? We go into Ephesians. Ephesians talks about, Ephesians 6 talks about putting on the full armor of Christ, of God himself being guarded in the truth because we're going to get darts thrown at us. And I remember when I was um, living in California, going back to the story, I, was, I wasn't I was the cool girl and I didn't care. I was about my father's business. I was like, listen, this is who I am. The world's not going to persuade me to try and fit in and to try and do what everybody else is doing and smoking a vape pen and doing all these things because the world will put pressure on you. You're constantly being tested. And a lot of the times things were offered to me. And in those moments, it was my morality. It was my heart posture. It was my faith in God that I had to say, no, thank you. You can respectfully, you can respectfully decline offers and things if it doesn't align with the word of God, if it doesn't align with your faith in Christ. This walk is a lifestyle. We wake up every day to choose Jesus. And yes, you're going to choose Jesus in, in the midst of crowds, in the midst of an environment, an atmosphere where they hate Jesus Christ. We are truly the one religion, Christianity is, where we get mocked the most. But that goes into Jesus sharing with us, listen, you're going to be mocked for my name's sake. You're going to suffer for Jesus. That's just what we take on, right? He tells us the road that leads to eternity is very, it's straight. It's a straight path. It's very narrow. Not many people find it. Not many people are on it. And that's why it's difficult because we're constantly clashing with the world. There's sin. There's darkness. There's confusion. There's so much deception that is demonic in the world. I know I came from that and I'm so grateful that my eyes are open. I'm grateful that your eyes are open, that you can stay here today to receive this word and be encouraged by the Lord because we are his vessels. And so I just want to encourage you today that um, there's moments where you have to actually stand up and speak up. And we're never alone. We never have to worry about, okay, God, like, I don't know what to say. Like, what am I going to say? See, God sets the tone. God sets the place and he sets the person, the people, right? I always pray, God, put people in my path that I can minister to, that I can love on, that I can just share the word, the gospel. If I reach one person, that is all that matters because there's one extra soul for the kingdom of God. We are soul winners, you guys. We are ambassadors for the kingdom of God. That is who we are. That is our position. Everything we do glorifies, should glorify God. And if it doesn't, throw it out. This is a relationship with Jesus. We have to ask the Lord to come into our hearts to help us, to strengthen us, to put the words in our mouth, right? I constantly ask in prayer, God, give me words of knowledge. That's by going to his word. God, give me words of wisdom. That's by putting on Christ's mind. Being like Christ, thinking like Christ, seeing like Christ, loving like Christ is an example and it, it's just a reflection of who he is to the world. So yeah, people aren't going to like us and that is okay. You have to be okay with people that walk away. You have to be okay with being mocked as a believer, as a disciple in Jesus. You literally have to say, okay, that's fine. Maybe that they're just not for me. Maybe God is just shutting this door in this season. Maybe they were never my friends to begin with. That's just the truth. And that is the reality as walking as a disciple. I lost a lot of friends along the way. I lost family members along the way. And not out of, out of choice, not out of because I wanted them to leave, but it was because we clashed. Darkness and light, like the word says, does not mix well. Nothing good comes out of that, right? We're unequally yoked. You have to be equally yoked. God sets us to be within the body of Christ. We help function, right? We, we, each of us has a gift 
We each of us have an anointing because we carry the Holy Spirit within us, but is seeking God to receive that, to walk in the provision of God. So I rather have friends in the faith. I rather have community in the faith that are drawing me back to Jesus because this world is constantly drawing us into it. So we have to part ways with the world and the flesh and the things that easily ensnare us and hold us down and we're below water. We have to really give those things unto God in prayer, sometimes through fasting. Put on worship, y'all. I love worship. And before I like, when I was living with my family, we constantly had worship on just throughout the day. We'll, we'll turn it on the TV or have a little speaker on or whatever the case may be. But it was always in the background. And I will tell you, when you play worship music, it's just like it sets the environment in your home for peace to come in, for joy to come in. You have to start declaring the word of God over your homes as well. Because as we're out in the world, we're constantly like dealing with life and people, especially if you're, if you're in, if whatever your job position may be outside of like ministry, be, everything is ministry. Let me say it that way. Everything is ministry. Being a parent is a ministry. Being a spouse is a ministry because we're constantly serving if we put ourselves in that position. If we're taking on the world, we're seeing things of the world every day. We're dealing with people in the world, whether you're in your workplace and you're among unbelievers, which you can be the light there right? Or in school, you come home and you want to come home to your safe haven. You want to come home to the sanctuary of peace and, and Jesus. You want to come home to where you're not in chaos. And it's by setting the tone and atmosphere within yourself and Jesus, right? Sitting with God and allowing God to just fill you up. Because if God fills you up, then your environment is filled up. We must be poured up. I always say, I cannot pour out through this ministry if I'm not being poured into. I need to sit with God. It's a responsibility, but it's also accountability, you guys. So again, maybe you're in the midst of you know your class and everybody's just a jokester these days. People are very, let me tell you, people are opinionated today. There's so many beliefs out there that are not true. There's a lot of false narratives. There's a lot of deception, a lot of confusion that a lot of kids are, are really taking on. It's so, so sad, but it's up to us to be the light of this world, the salt of this earth. Do not change for anybody. Do not change for a relationship first and foremost. If you like someone in school, in your class, in your workplace, but that person, let me tell you, not to condemn people nor judge them, but you have to be discerning. God tells us you will know them by their fruit. Don't partner yourself with something you know is gonna lead you astray from the Lord. It's better to wait. It's better to, you know, be in Christ-like community than it is to be drifted away. It's not worth it, in my opinion. So stay suited up and armored. And if you ever need accountability, maybe you're going through something at work or a job or school, whatever it may be, if you're going through something, I highly encourage you to be plugged into community, whether it's in person, online. That's why we have an online ministry. And also have accountability. People that you, you can trust, that you can go to and say, hey, I'm dealing with this. I'm struggling with this addiction. I'm struggling with what I'm going through in school. I'm going through this and people are saying this about me and I'm struggling in my faith. It's so important to confess and open up your heart and talk about things. And I, I get it's hard in a world where you're easily condemned. Sometimes we, even the church, like they can judge us. But when somebody's walking in the faithfulness and discipleship of Jesus and they're being led by the Holy Spirit, that's who you should go to. And that's why we have our groups. And I don't charge any cent for anyone to be a part of our groups. This is a free community. And we love on people. We pray for you. We're here for you. Don't ever think you're alone. God doesn't want us to be alone. He doesn't leave us alone. So we, we need to partner with one another, right? Sharpen, iron sharpens iron. We sharpen one another. We, we bring each other back to Christ. And so again, don't be, don't be moved by what people have to say. People will say all kinds of things, but remember, it's, it's what people are dealing with internally that comes out, right? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if things that are coming out of people are negative, that's just what they're dealing with. But it, ha it has no reflection towards you, and we cannot take offense to the things that people say. 
because it's not you they're hurting. They're hurting themselves, really, in reality. So I encourage you, do not, do not be led into not talking about Jesus. I know like sometimes there's protocols and work at work, you know, your workspace or like you can't talk about religion, but God finds a way where there's a will with God, there's a way and he will always make a way. It's just so amazing why God puts you somewhere and how you can minister the gospel and not back down from it. No religion scares me out of talking about Jesus. No atheism scares me out of talking about Jesus. We have to ask God to give us strength and wisdom. Even if you're there for one person or two people or there for everybody, but God puts you in a place where he can use you for whatever and whoever it may be for. Do not underestimate God's power. Amen. So I love you guys and I pray this blesses you abundantly. Share this message with someone today. This is a good message, y'all. I love you guys. God bless you.